In the 70s, personal computers hadn't been revolutionized by Steve Jobs yet. Let's have a laugh at the expense of some of the most hilarious computer advertisements from the 1970s. Apple One, the 1976 Apple One ad, where if the price doesn't send shivers down your wallet spine, the less than fruity logo lurking at the bottom just might. Because who needs a colorful apple with a bite taken out when you have a whole apple tree that seems to have lost its way in the orchard of graphic design? Strap in, folks, it's a journey to the roots of Apple where both price and logo were simpler times or maybe just a tad bit scary. Apple II. Apple makes great carrots. Because nothing says cutting-edge technology like a company branching out into agriculture. There's an early Apple ad sporting the advertising tone they still use today, and hey, at least they upgraded from the monochrome Apple logo to something a bit more modern. It's not just computers, it's a whole farm-to-table experience. Move over, Silicon Valley, Apple is planting seeds in the garden of innovation. Technico TMS 9900. Two bytes are better than one, because who needs a whole megabyte when you have the power of two bytes. It's the digital version of Double Trouble, or two heads are better than one, but let's be real, we're not exactly planning the next digital revolution with just two bytes, right? I mean, what can you do with them? Well, it's a mystery, perhaps, enough to store a wink emoji or the classic Hello World program. Welcome to the bite-sized wonders of computing. Apple II. The 1979 Apple II Atom, a cheeky jab at finding a good use for the forbidden fruit. But hey, we can do better than Atom, right? I mean, who needs an Apple II as makeshift clothes when you've got an entire wardrobe of technological advancements? Sorry, Atom, but it's time to trade those floppy disks for something a bit more stylish. Fashion faux pas aside, let's embrace the era of tech evolution with a bit more flair. Verbatim. Victor Borg, the maestro himself, specifies verbatim for recording his concert music, because even piano virtuosos have their preferences when it comes to data storage. Imagine if Borg had today's computers at his fingertips, he'd be composing symphonies with a few clicks, mixing tracks faster than a virtuoso on the keys. Verbatim might have been his choice then, but in today's digital symphony, the possibilities are as limitless as Borg's musical genius. The Sony 3.5-inch floppy disk proudly boasts storage capacities all the way to 2 megabytes. You can feel the past creeping from behind, can't you? Yeah, count your digital blessings, for we've transcended the era where 2 megabytes were at the pinnacle of storage achievement. Today it's like comparing a tricycle to a rocket ship. Oh, the joy of living beyond the floppy disk and its humble 2 megabyte dreams. Enter the Logitech Hi-Res House, the mythical creature of computer peripherals. The ad may talk a big game, but let's be real, have you ever actually seen the elusive mouse in the wild? It's like the Bigfoot of the tech world, rumored to exist, but sightings are about as rare as finding a needle in a haystack. Bravo Logitech for keeping us on our toes, wondering if the Hi-Res mouse is just a figment of our peripheral imagination. TRS-80 Model 100 Disk Video. This is the portable computer of yesteryears that makes you question the very definition of portable. Can you believe that people once thought lugging around what looks like a TV with a keyboard was the epitome of on-the-go computing? Imagine the biceps workout from hauling that contraption around. It's a reminder that the evolution of technology, what was once considered portable, is now more of a museum exhibit. The times have changed and thankfully, so have our expectations of portability. Apple Computer what kind of man owns his own computer? A question from a time when having a computer was a status symbol, and owning one was being part of an exclusive club. Fast forward to today, and it's more like what kind of person doesn't own a computer? Poor Benjamin Franklin might be a bit sad to see that his beloved kite has fallen out of fashion. Yeah, times have changed, and owning a computer is almost as commonplace as owning a coffee mug. Honeywell. 
What the heck is electronic mail? A quirky ad from Honeywell that shows just how far we've come. Today, email needs no introduction, but there was a time when Honeywell had to convince people of the wonders of this electronic marvel. Imagine a world where people scratch their heads as the concept of sending messages through the digital realm. XComp Hard Disk, introducing the hard disk you've been waiting for, or so they say, you know, the one we won't be setting up a tent and camping out for in 2016. Brace yourselves for the ad that probably had people saying, whoa, a hard disk? Tell me more about this cutting edge technology from ancient times. System Industries Disk Systems. Flashback to the era when 80s megabytes set you back a cool 12K, because who needs an arm and a leg when you can just trade it for some digital storage, right? And hold on to your wallets, folks, because 300 megabytes were going for around $20,000. Fortunately, nowadays, your hard disk won't make you mortgage your house. Ah, the sweet symphony of progress and plummeting prices. Ah, the Seagate ST4096, a relic from the golden age of storage when megabytes were king. Fast forward to today and Seagate, my friend, has a different tale to tell. The capacity? Well, it's like comparing a puddle to an ocean. And for the price, brace yourself, it might be easier to part with a kidney than to afford that storage upgrade. Oh, how the times have changed and apparently so have our hard drive expectations and budgets. Computer components. 10 megabyte hard disk. Breaking news from the 70s, back in the day, $3,459 could snag you a whopping 10 megabytes of hard disk space. Yes, you heard it right, not gigabytes, not terabytes, but good old megabytes. Now, think about it. Adjusted for inflation, that's around 20K today. And for that kind of cash, you could buy 2,000 rolls of glow-in-the-dark toilet paper. Decisions, decisions, 10 megabytes, or number two in the dark comfortably. The struggle was real, my friends. Moro Designs 26 megabyte hard disk. Hold on to your pocketbooks, time travelers. In the not-so-distant past, a cutting-edge 10 megabyte hard disk system would set you back a jaw-dropping $3,695. Yes, you heard it right, 2,001 rolls of glow-in-the-dark toilet paper. In the grand scheme of today's tech market, it's safe to say that if you're still clinging to that ancient relic, you're losing out faster than a hare in a tortoise ray. Chromemco Z2H. Behold the dawn of the low-cost hard disk computers. Ah, the days when floppy disks were the height of chic, because nothing says cutting edge like a disc that's just as flimsy as the name suggests. Those were the times when the floppy disk was the in thing and we thought we were riding the tech wave with our storage solutions that doubled as frisbees. Oh, how far we've come from the floppy fashion era. Lotus Magellan 2.0 where finding something is as inevitable as finding your car keys in the last place you look. Thanks, Lotus, for reminding us that the average hard disk is basically a labyrinth with around 20,000 places to stash your digital treasures. Your subtle message is received loud and clear. We'll keep searching with love, especially for that elusive search function of yours. Ah, the joy of digital hide and seek the Shugart disk drive, because who needs a bank vault when you can have a digital safe that's practically the size of a small car? Yes, folks, they're not just drives, they're humongous digital guardians of your precious megabytes. Forget about fitting it under your desk, you might need a dedicated room for this technological behemoth, the era when your storage solution needed its own zip code. Those were the days. Micro Pro WordStar. Can your processor survive the ultimate screen test? It's a classic black and white print, but I'm 99.9% .9 certain it's green text on a black background. Because nothing says cutting edge technology like squinting at your screen and questioning the very fabric of your visual perception. So buckle up, folks. It's not just a screen test, it's a journey into the monochromatic mysteries of computing. Remington Rand Univac, welcome to the thrilling world of computer operation in real time, a term redefined in a way that makes you question the very fabric of time itself. Back in the day, real time might have meant grabbing a coffee while your computer processed a command. Ah, the good old times when patience was a virtue and waiting for your computer felt more like waiting for a pot of water to boil. Fasten your seatbelts because in the world of computing, time is 
but a loosely defined concept. Behold the sexy pendril modem, because nothing gets the heart racing like the sultry allure of baud rates and data transmission. This ad probably single-handedly convinced the world to retire the word sexy and modem from sharing the same line. Who knew that the digital realm had a seductive side? Brace yourself, folks, because this modem is so steamy it might just leave you blushing faster than a dial-up connection. Chrome Emco 16K RAM card. Introducing the new 16K RAM card, the magical wand that turns your computer into a working giant. The catch? Well, your computer might need to bulk up a bit. Feast your eyes on the sheer majesty of this RAM card, a technological beast that could make your sleek computer tower resemble the Hulk after a particularly hearty meal. Size matters, especially in the world of 16K RAM cards where gigabytes were but a distant dream and bulkiness was a badge of honor. Moro Designs Super RAM Memory Master 16K Static. For just two cents a bite, dive into the buffet of RAM goodness. Because who needs to break the bank when you can treat your computer to a pocket-friendly feast of data? It's the bite-sized special where your wallet stays plump and your RAM gets the upgrade it deserves. Forget gourmet prices, it's all about satisfying your computer's hunger without leaving your budget hungry. Bon Appetit, tech-savvy Penny Ventures. Lotus 123. 123 advertisement from Byte. Because why settle for a computer that works at the speed of light when you can have one that zips along at the pace of a superbike? Yes, you heard it right, folks. Forget about regular speed. We're talking about a two wheel turbocharged data driven beast. Buckle up and prepare for a ride on the information superhighway, where your computer's velocity matches that of the coolest superbike in town. Sinclair ZX80. The ZX80? The personal computer that promises the glory of computing for just under 200 bucks? What a steal, right? Well, hold your excitement because it might look more like the awkward love child of a calculator and an intercom and the sleek powerhouse you were imagining. But hey, it's not about the looks, it's about the computing magic that happens when you press those clunky keys. Who needs aesthetics when you can have computing history? in all its calculator intercom glory. Apple II and III. Now step aside, Thomas Jefferson. The Apple II and III were here to revolutionize decision making. Sure, Jefferson had one of the best minds of 1776, but today we've got Apple making decisions look cooler than ever. And it's not just about having a good mind, it's about having an Apple mind. And let's talk about Apple's knack for getting celebrities, even those who lived more than two centuries ago, to join the tech revolution. Saul. Presenting the small computer that won't fence you in, because who needs boundaries when you've got Sol? If you want a powerful processor, Sol seems to be the word on the digital street. It's like the rebel of the computing world refusing to be confined by the constraints of traditional machines. Or at least, that's what they're trying to convey. The power of Sol breaking free from the fences and embracing the wild world of computing. The Osborne. The Osborne computer, the once proud companion that, if carried today, might elicit the same reaction as in the ad, but for very different reasons. In its heyday, it was the epitome of portable computing. Now, if you whip out that Osborne model, people might look at you, not in awe, but in a what rock has this guy been living in sort of way. Oh, and how times have changed, and so have our expectations of what qualifies as a portable marvel. Intelligent Systems Inner Color 3621. Putting colors to work in computers, a phrase that might have been the equivalent of our excitement for retina displays today. Back then, the introduction of color to computing was like unveiling a masterpiece in a world previously dominated by monochrome. It's the tech version of going from black and white TV to 4K resolution. Ah, the joy of discovering the world in living color through the lens of evolving computer technology. Okay, so I guess that's enough. I'm having too much fun revisiting these ads. They do a better job of tickling my funny bone than being a computer. If any of these made you laugh, or at least breathe really fast through your nose, give this video a like. And while you're at it, do subscribe to the channel for more of these. Well, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.